Welcome. Whenever you are or wherever you are as we gather for worship online for Redeemer and Grace Lutheran Churches, as well as all others who may be joining us. In addition to the announcements that you have seen, I have three more. One concerns where we are today with COVID. Unfortunately, online. Secondly, during this month of August, as well as we move into September, the call committee will be going more deeply into the mission site profile, which all the members of both congregations will be asked to review and comment on. Please keep them in your prayers. Two broad areas they continue to work on. Talk about the mission of a congregation, as well as the identity of a congregation. Both of those are to be teased out based on the very time and the location of every congregation. To assist as we move forward, there are a couple of books that the call team committee will have and you as a congregation will have when your newly called pastor arrived. I just wanna mention two of them because they in part are providing some background to our, our worship series for the balance of this summer. The first book is called An Autopsy, Autopsy of a Deceased Church. A little scary, but it really talks about 12 different ways congregations can continue to thrive and keep their church alive when there's so much that's going on in our culture. And number two, a book about the theology of what it means to be a congregation. It's entitled Beyond Mission, Beyond Maintenance to Mission, and Craig Neeson is the author of that book. Primarily, its focus is on claiming your identity, as well as getting clarity about what the mission, what the direction God is calling the community into the future. Those two books are what will be kind of a, a core resource for the call team as well as for the congregation as you move into the future. And then finally, today, we begin a five-week series around God's means of grace in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America's narrative study of, of what it focuses on for Sunday morning worship. So we'll be focusing on what's normally called the sacraments, the means of grace, baptism, Holy Communion, and additional ones in our polity, which we don't talk about a lot, but we do practice, confession and absolution, and then finally, the mutual consolation of the saints. So those are what we're gonna be addressing over these next several weeks during, during August and as we enter into September. Today's reading and tomorrow will focus on baptism. As we do that, I invite you now, before we get into the service, to either, if you're in the kitchen, be close to your sink. If you're not in the kitchen, then if you are able, grab a glass of water or a container of water to have with you as we will have a time in near the end of the homily to, to remember our baptism and to do that with the water that is available to us. Let's continue with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of mystery, your gift of baptism is a mystery, even as it is a promise and a responsibility. Teach us what it means, and also allow us the space to wonder in your mystery of baptism. Amen. Thank you. 
reading today is Acts 2, verses 37 to 42. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Word of God, way of life. Thanks be to God. The promise is for you, for your children, and all and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. On this day, it is hard for me, and maybe it's hard for you, not to feel far away from the Lord our God. For sure, in our immediate life here at Redeemer and as at, at Grace, the resurgence of COVID-19 virus and how it will impact our worship and our congregations. Plus, the lack of trust of many people in our own country to trust our health leaders, and just the angst of what it means to be a human and in search of life. I'm thinking even of this morning as I was having coffee at the Starbucks here on Vista to witness all the different cars with all the different states throughout many parts of the United States that are flocking to different places, to Boise, I'm presuming looking for something in life that may be missing from where they've come from. All of these concerns and many more challenge our ability to be at peace in our place and in our time. Well, in response to this angst, a kind person, Daniel Erlander, a beloved campus pastor whom some of you may have had the pleasure of knowing if you attended Pacific Lutheran University, oh, I don't know, three decades ago. He's been retired for a while, and I knew him at Holden Village, sister camp of Luther Heights. Um, his response to me and all those who might be feeling the sense of angst or feeling far away would be this. Just remember, we live wet. We live wet. Remembering we live wet is important not only during the transition time of a congregation such as you are experiencing here between regularly called pastors, but it is something to remember and to hold on to each and every day of our lives. It is, that is, living wet, remembering our baptism, is at the very core of our identity as followers of Jesus. It is where we are being encouraged to find peace. It is where we are encouraged to be able to share with folks, our families, our friends, strangers, who might engage us and if we are open to it, to discuss why we are Christians in this day and this time. It is it's where we go to, to, to find our life and to be able to, to share it with others by claiming that we are people who live wet. We are what is called the church. For some, the waters that nourish the city of God in our ancient poetry, the poetry that we looked at earlier this year in the Psalms, um, which we as followers of Jesus and as relatives of our Jewish brothers and sisters, that the city of God, the city of peace is God's household and it's a place where we, through Jesus, have been gifted citizenship 
made possible through baptism, the means of grace of baptism. It's that city of God, God's household is forever our home. Remembering his baptism every morning is how Martin Luther, the guy that's kind of the patron, small saint of who we are as Lutherans, made it through his daily struggles, his daily routines, his daily joys of life by holding on and remembering each morning that he was a baptized child of God. Well, next week, we're going to reflect a bit more about what baptism means for us. But now, holding on to the richness of the Psalms and and holding on to the richness of the poetry that we receive from our Jewish brothers and sisters, knowing that we've been grafted into the, the, what we call the city of God, the, the household of God, I wish to close with a poem, which is actually a prayer that our church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, the psalm that would be appointed in our narrative lectionary series, for this day. It's a, a song, it's a psalm of hope. Now, if we were worshiping in the sanctuary, I would encourage all of us to be prepared, and many congregations, and because we haven't even worshiped in the sanctuary here at Redeemer, but to gather around the baptismal fonts. So at this time, because we don't have the baptismal fonts here in the studio, if you will, and because you are where you are and I am where I am, I invite you now to get some water. We have water here with us. Water. And have it available to you either in your hand or in a container of some sort. As we will at the end of the reading of this psalm take a moment or two. And if you have somebody with you, I would invite you to be the one who dips your hands in the water and then making the sign of the cross on the person next to you, say, you are a baptized beloved child of God. And you can add in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you're by yourself, at the end of this poem, Psalm 46, I invite you to dip your hand or if you're really little odd like me, sometimes if I was in a lake, I'd take a bunch and just dump it over me. But the notion that you are, with the living waters, a baptized child of God, immerse yourself in it and claim God's gift, that you are a baptized child of God. Nothing will ever come between you and God. So I invite you to do that. We'll take a second. I'll do it for myself after the reading of the psalm, and then we will say amen to close the homily. Have your water ready, and I will read from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold, the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow, who shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. God, the God of Jacob, is our stronghold. And now as you are able,
grab some water and to the person next to you or onto yourself, experience a little of what it means to be living wet. I'm a beloved child of God in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me as you're able in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and who will come, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We pray. For the time of inconsolable sorrow and for the times of unbridled joy, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, this world can often be a frightening place with dangers unimagined and threats real and perceived. Protect us and fortify us to go out with good courage, working tirelessly to bring about your peaceful kingdom on earth. Keep us steadfast in your word. Almighty God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of creation, our world feels upside down with threats of disaster, drought, and floods. Trials to farmers and workers and those charged with managing our resources. Lead us to care for creation, and even when all seems wrong, remind us that it is your world and under your rule. Almighty God. Hear our prayer. Gracious God of healing, bring all the weary to your streams of healing water. Strengthen each of us with the power of the Holy Spirit and assure the sick and those who care for them of your love, your presence, and your power. Be especially with those on our prayer list and those who we name at this time. Almighty God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, we entrust our supplications to your capable hands, both gentle and strong. Receive our prayers and make us ever faithful to you. And together we say, Amen. Almighty God, you created us with wonderful diversity of people, language and culture in your image, and offer us a covenant like no other. O oh Lord, the chance to be your people gathered together in baptism. Your love surrounds us. For your word of life, O oh God, we pray. We give you thanks and praise. And as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And as we hold on to the gift of our baptism, I invite you to receive the blessing on this day, and may it nurture you, and may you remember your baptism every day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. And we all say, thanks be to God.